então, boa tarde a todos. Um, inicialmente, agradecer pela presença. O, o nosso convidado de hoje é o professor Rony Valecos. Ele recebeu o, o seu bacharelado e o, e o mestrado em matemática pela Universidade Técnica Frederico Santa Maria, em Chile, em 95 e 98, respectivamente. Ele também recebeu, também obteve um mestrado em estatística pela Universidade de Connecticut, nos Estados Unidos, em 2002, e depois um doutorado em estatística pela Universidade de Maryland, em Baltimore County, County em 2006. Atualmente, ele é professor associado no Departamento de Matemática da Universidade Técnica Frederico Santa Maria, no Chile, e os seus interesses de pesquisa são estatística espacial, processamento de imagens espaciais, séries temporais e, e outros temas associados. Uh, Ronnie, it's, it is a, a great pleasure for us to, to have you here with us um, and for you to be talking a little bit about your, your research. Um, now, please, the, 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 floor, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, muito obrigado pelo convite. Uh, I don't speak Portuguese more than that. So uh, I will give my talk in English and uh, it is a pleasure to, to, to give this seminar. I thank uh, Paulo for the invitation. And um, I will talk about something that is uh, very close to my heart. I have been working in this topic for, I, I will say, 15 years. And um, the beginning of this modeling the effective sample size was uh, uh, proposed by Alan Gelfand when I was a grad student in Connecticut a long time ago. But uh, I really uh, consider again this topic in 2013 uh, with Felipe Osorio, one of my colleagues, and we uh, started uh, developing some theory and applications about this. I will start with a, um, with a, there, a world map. This, uh, the, the main ob objects uh, that I will present in this talk are related to spatial statistics in which we have uh, georeference uh, data. Uh, this means uh, coordinates uh, for which we have uh, one or more observations. And of course, we assume that there is autocorrelation between these observations. Uh, we will have a sample size that will be fixed for this, that will be uh, planned in the beginning. And the idea is also that we will reduce, in some sense, the dimension or re reduce the sample size due to the autocorrelation. And of course, we will have some covariates because we will develop this in a spatial regression process context. So, uh, saying that, I will just give uh, an introduction to this topic, and then I will show some developments, uh, uh, and then I will present an application to soil data. And finally, I will give some future research problems and some references as well. Uh, this uh, picture is showing a study that was conducted uh, I think previous to 2005 in Syracuse in the US. And this is a very polluted area. So Alan, uh, uh, Daniel Griffith, a professor from Texas, he conducted a study to see how contaminated is the soil. And he considered uh, this study area in which he took, he draw 3,600 uh, points. Okay, 3,600 points about that. It's, it's, it's a lot of information. You can see many points here, but before sending these uh, samples to the lab, they computed the effective sample size, which is a function of the n and function of the sample size and function of the autocorrelation function. They uh, calculated this sample size, effective sample size, and uh, they come up with 1,300 observations. And they sent these 1,300 observations to, to the lab, and this cost half of the budget, original budget. So you can see from here that reducing the sample size can save a lot of resources, and, and, and this is the idea here. 
why the sample size can be reduced? Well, I will answer that question uh, later, but the idea is that if you have correlated observations and then the sample size can be reduced, can be decreased, okay? If you don't have uh, autocorrelation, all observations are IAD, and then you should consider the whole uh, sample. Okay, that's uh, the, the, the main introduction, I think, to, to the problem. So, uh, theoretically speaking, I will go back to 1993, to Cressy's book. It's a very well-known book in spatial statistics. In page 16, he defined the effective sample size as the equivalent number of IID observations associated with a special sample of size n. So what we have here, we have a spatial process and we put all these observations in a vector. So we have n sites, S1, S2, Sn are the sites and you measure the same uh, variable in all these uh, uh, locations. Now, we'll assume normality and that the mean is constant and the autocovariance function will be the autocovariance function of an uh, autoregressive process of order one. So very simple one. And then we can try to compute the variance of Y bar. So if the observations are independent, you may remember that the variance of Y bar is sigma squared divided by N. Yes, if all observations are IAD. However, in this case, this variance should depend on sigma, on N, and also on rho. So this is the, the, the expression that if you see this and put this expression downstairs, we will have kind of sigma squared divided by N, but, but this new N is called effective sample size, and, I, and he defined here. This will clearly be a function of N and also a function of rho. So see, if rho is equal to zero, this vanishes and we have n, great. And if uh, rho, of course, is, is, is equal to one, this will, this will be equal to one, okay? So if, all, if we have perfect autocorrelation, we need just one observation because all information is contained there. But if, if we have correlation equal to 0.5, well, in that case, we will need a formula to compute this effective sample size. Of course, we can uh, draw a picture, uh, uh, the EAS versus raw here to see how this is decreasing. But many questions arose from this experiment. For example, if you have a general correlation structure here, not only the autoregressive of or the one correlation, any general structure here, how can have a formula to compute ESS in that situation? Okay, so uh, this is the problem, how to define and how to, how, how to compute and how to estimate the effective sample size when you have a particular process, spatial process, and what kind of property are we expecting from this measure? So, of course, of course, this should take into account the correlation structure, yes. It should take into account the sample size, yes, that will be considered fixed in this study. And in one paper with Felipe Osorio, one of my colleagues in 2014, we established, established some properties that are expected to have for a measure like the effective sample size. The first one is this. The effective sample size should be a quantity between one and n. Secondly, if we increase the sample, suppose we have a bigger sample and then the ESS should increase as well because it needs to be updated accordingly. Now, if you have perfect correlation, as I mentioned before, we can just draw one sample. Instead, if you have N, like independence, and then you should take all observations because any new observation is new information for the process, okay? So these are the desirable process, uh, properties that one uh, effective sample size should have. Now, uh, instead of uh, defining an autoregressive process here like crazy, we generalize this to a regression process in which the expected value is fixed and we have a covariate here. So the, the first definition was in the context of uh, a spatial regression process and Griffith in 2005 
in 2008, suggested this amount, meaning the trace of sigma divided by one transpose sigma one times n. So this satisfy the above properties? Yes. And in, uh, in, in addition, we define a regression process with constant mean, and we computed the Fisher information quantity about mu. And because we have parameters here uh, in the covariance structure that is theta and mu, these are the parameters. When you compute the Fisher information quantity, of course, this will depend on theta. So the Fisher information quantity is this amount, and we define the effective sample size like this. We have a very simple expression, but this depends on the inverse of the correlation matrix. So if the correlation matrix is simple, the inverse will be simple to compute. But for a general case, we will not have a closed form for this. So this is our proposal, and we studied the above properties that we mentioned as desirable properties for the effective sample size in the context of regression with a constant mean. And then we prove basically doing by induction that the ESS is increasing in N for D fixed where D is the dimension of the space. We also proved that if N is fixed, uh, the effective sample size is increasing in the dimension as well. And the second proposition that we proved at that moment was the following. If we have the same context, but the correlations, all entries of the correlation matrix are positive, and then we can prove that the effective sample size for this definition is always between 1 and n, which is, 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 is a really exciting because uh, this was very difficult to prove. This part was simple because we use Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, but for this part we use uh, inference uh, and, and the fact that the best linear and bias estimator has some properties here. Now, uh, in addition to that uh, work, in the same paper, we develop uh, the ES for several uh, processes to see how the, the ESS looks like. For example, we developed the ESS for two spatial processes, general spatial processes. We developed ESS for SAR, simultaneous autoregressive processes, and conditional autoregressive processes. We define the effective sample size not only for normal distributions, we generalize for elliptic con elliptically contoured distributions, and as well propose the Remel estimation uh, for the parameter theta and also for the ESS. We estimated first this parameter and then we estimate the whole amount. Now, uh, of course, the, the, the properties of, of the estimates were uh, also explored by a Monte Carlo simulation study and two applications with real world data sets, one in soil contamination and another with transit lines, uh, sampling schemes in, in, in the ocean. Now, um, we suggested also a methodology to compute, the to, to get the observations once you have computed the effective sample size. Suppose you have an effective sample size of 80 observations. The next question is, how can draw, how can get those observations from the whole sample? So we suggested a methodology uh, to, to approach this problem. And we are not the first to propose this. Many authors have proposed here to perform some kind of uh, tessellations, Boronoi tessellations, and then to do random sampling inside of each category. This will work better, but the idea is to preserve the correlation structure, two criteria, preserve the correlation structure or to minimize the Krieg invariance. Now, uh, in a recent paper in 2018, we extended the uh, theory for a general regression process, spatial regression process, in which the epsilon, the vector of errors, has a normal distribution with a correlation matrix depending on these covariance parameters. In that case, the information quantity, Fisher information quantity here, is given by this expression. And if you look closely to this expression, the effective sample size will be a linear combination of the uh, rows of this matrix. 
So in some sense, we can, every row will contribute to one term here, and then we will average properly here where this weights needs to be determined. Now, is this plausible? Is this uh, interesting? Is this uh, meaningful, this quantity? Well, I will show you later that, in fact, when we have a multivariate process, this expression will appear again. So, um, if we try to express this expression in terms of matrix um, matrices, we can uh, define a regular spatial process here, regression process. We can put all these uh, uh, vectors of, in this form, and where well, these are the locations, and the effective sample size can be written. You see that a regular average of these amounts, and this can be written in terms of matrix matrices. So the trace of this matrix divided by P. So the ESS will be convenient to work with the trace, depending the, uh, depending the problem, but using the properties of the trace, or maybe you can compute individual ESS and then we can average depending what, it, what is the problem, problem there. Of course, this is a generalization because if the design matrix is equal to one, and then we recover the previous effective sample size when the process has a constant mean. Okay, so this is the generalization, and of course, ESN also will be equal to N. We uh, define also this amount when R is a, non is a singular matrix. In that case, we can use a more Penrose matrix, and the effective sample size will also exist there. Okay, and now uh, what, what is important here is that we have developed the effective sample size only for the case where the response variable, we have a response variable is observed in many locations, S1, S2, Sn, but it is one response variable observed in these locations. Now, the problem here turns to be different. Now, the question is, what if I, I, have, I have several variables in which I will measure all these variables in the same point? So I will measure the first variable in the same location, the second and the M variable in this point. And then if I take a random sampling here, I will consider many times N times N vectors of this type. Okay. So in that case, how can combine this N and this N in such a way that I can produce an effective sample size here that maybe will consider the individual effective sample size of each variable. The effective sample size of each of these variables will not be the same because it will depend on the correlation structure of each process. Yes, it will depend on that. Now, but if I combine all this effective sample size, I can produce a sample average like before. Well, that is, is, is really the, the result I will show you in two more minutes. But I have to say that we can uh, deal with this problem putting all observations in one single vector where all observations are there, all response variables are there. The first variable is here, the second and the last one is there. And then if we write this model as a regression process like before, this will be a particular case when the matrix X is this, the design matrix is this. So in some sense, we can use the previous results but we have to change some things because now we have a chronicle product between the vector of ones and uh, an identity matrix of order M. So the errors are uh, arranged in the same way as the response variable so that this uh, model is meaningful. And the covariance structure, of course, will also depend on some parameters as well. Now, in order to uh, write a convenient notation, uh, we will write the correlation matrix in this way as a block matrices and the inverse, we will denote the, the elements of the inverse in this way. If this is a pattern correlation matrix, maybe a toplitz matrix, for example, the inverse will be easy. But if you have general expression, this inverse will not have a closed form. So we have denoted these blocks as A, I, J in such a way that we can have a small expression for the effective for, for the final effective sample size. As I noticed before, uh, we have a spatial regression process here. 
and the matrix will be this one. So this is a particular case of the previous uh, process. So this is a particular case. I will go back a little bit uh, of this pro of this process. See, so uh, it is good to know that because in that case uh, we can just compute the same amount as before. How was uh, defined the effective sample size in this way? You remember the trace of this divided by p. Now will be the trace of this divided by m. So that was computed here. The trace of this, we replace the amounts here. And when we use a trace property, uh, and we use the property of the Kronecker product properties, and then the trace property again, and then we arrive to a real number. So the trace is the same as that real number. So the effective sample size in this case will be this expression. Where of course this could be very complicated, okay, but we numerically can get that value, okay. If the if the matrix has an inverse, we can get easily this these values. So the effective sample size, in fact, is an average, yeah, a weighted version of each block, okay. So these are good news because if m is equal to one, again we recover the previous uh, definition given by the Fisher information. Uh, uh, about uh, uh, new, okay. Now uh, I have to say that uh, I will give some examples uh, about this effective sample size to see how this um, coefficient looks like. For example, if you consider an intra-class correlation here, where all elements in the diagonal are equal to one, and out of the uh, diagonal are equal to raw, in that case uh, we can write the matrix the r to the minus one has a closed form and this will be the form so when we average we average here we'll have the same amount as the effective sample size for one variable because we are adding n n m times divided by m so this will be the same expression as a single uh, spatial variable so um what else well in multivariate uh, spatial statistics, we have several ways to, to, to model this. One way is to consider a core generalization model. Another way is to use a Gaussian process with some modern correlation function, for example. But when you increase the number of variables, uh, the modern covariance function uh, adds very uh, restricted conditions to the parameters. So we look for this correlation model in order to model the soil data we have in the beginning. So this is a special process because each component can be read it, written in terms of an uncorrelated function, y u i plus beta, and the covariance of these uh, new functions uh, are like this. The covariance uh, function is like this. Okay, so the, we are assuming that this process is, of course, stationary. So this covariance function depends only on h. And the covariance are composed by coefficients. This covariance uh, is also decomposed as one coefficient times a correlation structure. So in this way, uh, we can write the multivariate covariance function as a linear combination also of these correlation functions. And we can model a multivariate spatial data set using uh, this very naive model. But uh, what is an inconvenient of this model is that the main developments here, uh, every component is supposed to have the same range parameters and the same correlation function. So this is an inconvenient, especially when you have a high dimension. If you have six, in this case, we have six uh, heavy metals to deal with. So it is very unlikely to see that all variables will have the same correlation function and uh, the same range parameter. Yeah, this, the, the parameter of the correlation decays in the same form. That would be very unrealistic. But if you have that framework, we can compute uh, the estimates using, for example, weighted least squares or any uh, other um, uh, estimation uh, algorithm. To obtain the ESS, 
we have to define some uh, quantities. Here we define the HKL that are the distances between the locations SK and SL. And also we arrange the, 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 the response variable in the same way, in the same way as before. And then doing some algebra here, that is of course in the books, we are not discovering this. We can write the covariance matrix of the process uh, in this way. And in terms of this H matrix, which contain these elements. And uh, of course, uh, this can be written in terms of CIJs as well, okay? So um, what is the good news here is that the correlation matrix can be easily written in terms of these elements, D and sigma and D to the minus one, where D is the diagonal with these elements here. So once you write this matrix R, the effective sample size can be written easily because R to the minus one will be this expression. So now we can compute the effective sample size for the correlation model. And that we have this expression where again, these elements are here. And of course the inverse of the elements of the correlation structure are there. So once we have this, now we can turn to the application to see how we can deal with the soil contamination of the Syracuse data I presented in the beginning. So one, one thing is that for the previous model, for the, for, for the model given in two, that is spatial regression process, I will just mention that we have a likelihood function and then we can just easily compute the ML estimate of this vector, the, the mean parameter and the covariance parameters there. So as you know, the, the maximum likelihood estimator would, uh, will be that value that will maximize the log likelihood in this case. I will have to mention that we have uh, done some work here for, for the effective sample size when we compute the maximum likelihood estimator of the effective sample size. In that case, we proved that for an increasing domain sampling scheme, uh, the effective sample size is also asymptotically normal. That is a very interesting property and that will be uh, true for the matern correlation, and that was uh, that that result was proved by uh, Jonathan Acosta, that was my PhD student in 2018. Now, if we want to estimate, for example, the previous expression, we will just put the estimations here, okay? The theta estimated here, and there we'll have a, an ML estimation of the effective sample size, and the, the proof here is basically based. On, on, on the delta method, if you have asymptotic normality for theta, that, that is a property of the maximum likelihood, and then we can easily get uh, that under the, the, the delta method that we'll have a, a normality, the asymptotic normality for this, but to get the expression for the variance, that, that will be a little bit um, uh, difficult, okay? Now, I, I have completed the slides with the theory now I will uh, turn back to my, my main example here. I remember that this was a, an, ex an experiment that uh, took about uh, three years to get all observations, mainly in summer of 2003 and 2004. The, uh, um, the, the study was conducted by Daniel Griffith in Texas University. And I put some information here that would be relevant. As I mentioned before, we have 3,600 uh, observations uh, that were geocoded with a GPS there. And the main variables uh, are six, all these heavy metals, okay? So these are heavy metals that is not good if you are, uh, have these heavy metals in, 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 for example, in a residential place, this is not good. So they got some soil, soil samples to see if these are present in, in there. One uh, feature of the observations is that not all values were measured at the same locations yeah, for, the, for the study. So in order to uh, perform quality control, they plan to get a subsample, a small subsample to check if the values, for example, of these heavy metals are inside of the range that should be. So this was uh, in the middle of the study, they got this sample and 
uh, we asked to Daniel Griffith for that sample and analyze that small sample. So I have to tell you that we are not analyzing here this whole data set uh, because this was uh, analyzed already with uh, uh, Griffith definition. What we are doing here is analyzing a subsample of that uh, with 67 points across the study area that are displayed in the following fi uh, figure. These are the 67 points. You see that this, this, is, this is not very uh, interesting. This is, this is not what we really want. If you have to plan a study with 67 observations, maybe you should go to a regular grid sampling scheme or maybe to uh, just, um, you know, randomly on, in space. But this is what we have. We like it or not, this is what we have. So you see that there are very close uh, points there and also very distant point there, you know? So this is, is one of the things that make the problem very difficult and challenging, okay? Now, uh, we consider the raw data and uh, we computed some statistics for, for the raw data, the mean, median, standard deviation, skewness, kurtosis, and coefficient of variation. And also we transformed this using the logarithm transformation and got, of course, some values here. In some cases, for example, kurtosis was reduced, in others not. But in general, we apply to some of them, not all, some observations in which the logarithm transformation is convenient. After that, uh, we went to very simple things to try to reduce the dimension because, as I mentioned before, if you take the six variables there as a vector and see 66, 67 uh, realizations, this will be very tough to fit, uh, for example, a matern covariance function there for this six variate process because there are many restrictions for the parameters. Instead of that, we try to use uh, to reduce the dimension. There are many ways to reduce the dimension. You can do PCA or something like that. We did here some clustering. And what we did is just to consider, just considering the locations there, we try to uh, get a cluster here, another cluster there, or try to, to group the data. So we computed the between sum of square versus total sum of squares there to see how many groups is reasonable to consider. And you see that between two and four groups is, is reasonable considering this. I, I will say that this is just a criterion, okay? So, uh, well, if you just draw some Voronoi diagrams or tessellations here, we see that it's really interesting to consider three or four groups. But this information is also only based on the locations. Now, uh, we performed some, also some um, basic spatial analysis for the data. And uh, you see that we apply logarithm to three variables here, and these other were not improved applying uh, the logarithm, were not symmetrized, so the skewness was almost the same. And we uh, are summarizing here, we found that the Gaussian correlation function is, is the best correlation among a family there, and the parameters, the range, uh, the nugget effect, sigma squared the variance, uh, practical range, uh, the, the parameter phi, and practical range were uh, are, are, are being displayed there. So you have Gaussian correlation, exponential, and one spherical. So after that, we consider now, uh, try to fit some variograms because the, the sampling scheme, as I mentioned before, it was very difficult to select which one of these models fit better. But using uh, the mean square error or some measure like this, we can also select one specific variogram for, for each case, for each variable. Finally, uh, we perform a cluster analysis uh, for the six variables, not only based on the locations, also based on the observations using a hierarchical algorithm with complete linkage. And we group according to the practical range. And we have this as a result. I have to say that we perform the same analysis for different distances. For also, uh, for example, wars distance and the result is the same. We change to um, other methods to cluster things 
and uh, the results were preserved. So I think this is a very strong result. We can group the variables by pairs. You see, this is very important, very important, because if you have six, the six variables in a vector, you have to propose a model for, for the six variables. But if you have groups like pairs there, you can propose a model for this, another model for this, another model for this, and then we can use the average formula for the ESS. So each pair will have an ESS, and then we can average and get uh, use use the result that we have for the corregionalization cor process. Okay, so uh, these are the results. If you compute the effective sample size using independence, we'll have these numbers here for all these six variables. If you average this, you will have 33. Now, if you consider this as a vector and using that model, co-regionalization model, you have 52 here. For this pair, we have 43. For this pair, 26. And if we average this, we'll have 41 uh, observations. I have to say that the original sample is 67, so we have reduced 38% uh, the observations, okay? So this is uh, something that will not save too much money here, yeah, but if you have hundreds, that will be very significant. Now, what is this telling me? That if I have to estimate the mean with a fixed variance, uh, this will be able with 41 observations, or on the other hand, uh, in this sample of 67 observations, 41 are IAD. Now the next question is how to get those 41 in order to preserve the spatial association. That will be very difficult, I have to say, because you saw the sampling scheme there. Okay, that will not be easier because we have small sample size as well. If you get 41, maybe I will go back. Maybe you could try get 41 here or there, you have to consider all groups here, you see, e even this one. So that is not a, a simple problem, how to get the final ESS of size 41. Now, I am uh, uh, starting to finish my talk with some uh, comments. We have developed a new formula that is given support to average uh, individual effective sample size when you have a multivariate problem. This methodology uh, help us to uh, analyze uh, the subsample of the Syracuse data set. So it was very difficult one because the locations of, of the observations and a multivariate corregionalization analysis was used for three bivariate processes. And after classifying the components, we produce uh, three clusters with hierarchical clustering techniques. The final uh, reduction uh, of sample size was about 38%. Now, what do we have in mind for future perspe perspectives? Well, we would like to study ESS for nearly singular covariance matrices. You know, in spatial statistics, you have singular covariance matrices when you have very close points, very close locations. This will cause a, a near singular problem. If you have a replicate there, this will cause a singular covariance matrix. But if the distance is small, very small, this will cause a nearly singular covariance matrix. We would like to estimate that. We have we have some uh, working paper in this respect that will be will, will come come up soon. Now we would like to address the effective sample size for material science, they have they use a lot of uh, boronoid tessellations there. So how many observations uh, we plan to have in each boronoid cell, that could be uh, a matter of uh, further research. Also, we studied the asymptotic normality for the case where the sampling scheme is an increasing domain. But what if we have a fixed square there and you start putting observation, more observations there, Fix, fixed domain means that you have a fixed uh, place in a space and you start putting more, more observations there. If you put more and more observations, we conjecture that the effective sample size will have a upper bound because after a point, all information will be duplicated, okay? So we will try to prove that. And a semi-parametric estimator of the ESS will be useful 
when the normality is not reasonable. And the idea is to have a free model, well, you know, free, free model, uh, uh, actually a, a, an estimator that will be free of the model in, 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 in question, okay? So the idea is to have a, 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 an estimator that can be applied uh, avoiding um, distributional assumptions. And finally, uh, the study of the ESS under an optimal design perspective. We have to see it, if it is possible to obtain the effective sample size as, uh, as the minimum of uh, a functional form. Uh, that would be difficult. I have just that idea, but uh, uh, that would be something uh, to, to explore. Finally, uh, these are my references. The paper of Jonathan Acosta and, and I, uh, we published with his PhD dissertation is this. This is Griffith, uh, with a collaboration with Griffith. Uh, this was uh, a defective sample size applied for transect sampling schemes that I taught ta before. And um, this one, the last one, uh, is the paper that contains a multivariate effective sample size, which is going to appear soon in natural resource modeling. Finally, I would like to do some promotion to our book, uh, this was published in 2020 uh, in Springer, and the idea of this book is to provide coefficients to measure the relationship between two spatial variables. Uh, also, uh, to deal with these problems in, in a hypothesis testing context. And finally, there are two chapters to see how compare compare images, how to compare images in the sense of the correlation, not in the sense of the patterns there, just in, in the sense of the hidden spatial correlation. Okay, I have to thank for the invitation and for the patience. Uh, I'm delighted to have given this seminar in Bahia State University. Thank you very much, Paolo. Thank you very much, Ronnie, uh, for the very nice talk. I have to start to apologize. For some reason, we had some technical problems, uh, not in terms of your video or anything, was because people were asking to enter the, 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 the room and I did not have the chance of seeing that. So, so the, the, the notifications did not appear. So for instance, I got an email from Paulo Justiniano uh, saying that, that he was trying to, to enter and he, he, send, he sent his regards to you. Um, but uh, I, I promise that I will share the link as soon as it is available. Uh, and other people like Diego who was also trying, I, I could invite him with a specific link and also Nikolai, I also, I also could uh, send a link to him to enter. So, but, but I imagine that several people were just waiting for being accepted and I never got here the message oh. to, to, to accept them. So I, I apologize for that. No problem. Uh, I can now open for questions. Um, uh, if you want, uh, se, se quiserem fazer alguma pergunta em português, eu posso ajudar na tradução, se for mais fácil. Uh, if there are any questions, just, uh, just let me know. We have a few minutes for that. Uh, Diego. Diego, queres falar ou queres fazer em português e eu traduzo? Como é que preferes fazer? I have question, if possible. Yes, just, just let, let Diego, Diego ask, uh, ah, okay. Okay. wrote first in the chat. It was almost at the same time, but it was... Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I am it because he is younger. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Die Diego, go ahead. <laughs> Diego, if, if you want, uh, Diego. Ah. Ah, Diego was was asking. He wrote in the chat if you are if you are uh, planning to to make some extensions considering different distributions. Actually, the, that is a very important question that I, I have tried. I have tried, but it's very difficult to come up with the different results when we 
uh, apart from normality. You know, um, the Gaussian processes are very uh, well known and studied there, and we have some parametric models there. But if you separate from that, it is difficult because in a special stat we have just one realization of the process. So even to have normality, to check normality there, it is difficult because you have just one, no, uh, you know, replicates. So with one surface, you have to say that the whole process is normal. That is a very strong assumption. So I don't know how to deviate from there. I'm sorry for, for <laughs> to be honest, but uh, it is a very tough question there. I know some people that are generalizing uh, spatial processes for other distributions like contour, elliptical, and things like this. But I think we have to take those results with caution. That's the one I can say. Yes, thank you. Nikolai, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Ronnie, uh, for uh, this uh, nice uh, lecture introduction. Uh, I didn't know about uh, our uh, ESS uh, major, uh, but uh, uh, assisting uh, uh, your talk, um, uh, I have two comments uh, and one question. Uh, okay. Uh, the first question is the following. Uh, for uh, this uh, effective uh, sample size is uh, just a single number or not? Yes. Uh, so, uh, in my mind, uh, appears uh, the following uh, uh, analogy. Uh, you know uh, perfectly about uh, the correlation, the usual correlation, and you're using uh, correlation matrix uh, in your investigations. Uh, but also there exists, uh, uh, this is a global major of dependence some, somehow. Yeah. 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 Uh, but uh, looking on the uh, uh, on the spatial in different regions, somehow uh, uh, this global measure uh, tells nothing. Uh, <laughs> okay, correlation 0 0.3, what tells you? Nothing. So only positive uh, relation somehow. But uh, there exists uh, 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 the concept of local correlation. Okay. Uh, and this uh, simply uh, means that if you have a pair uh, n observations on the pair uh, x, y, you get n correlations, uh, n uh, local correlations. Uh, and this n local correlations uh, might uh, change from minus to plus, etc., etc. So, uh, this gives a little bit more information about the process. Mm. Uh, I, I, I do believe that uh, uh, this uh, idea is almost crazy uh, in uh, your, uh, uh, in your uh, 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 s behavior. Uh, because, uh, uh, so, but anyway, it gives uh, more information. Yeah. Uh, Second, uh, okay, I uh, understood that for different different clusters, you got uh, different uh, uh, effective uh, sample size. I use some uh, mixture uh, uh, of them. But uh, uh, if you uh, uh, can uh, reduce, uh, 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 not reduce, uh, to consider within each cluster some more uh, realizations of this uh, sample size, I do believe uh, that uh, the, this uh, would help. Uh, this will complicate uh, 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 your mind uh, in your work, but you have enough students, uh, I do believe. <laughs> uh, each one can work with uh, different... <laughs> now, uh, my question was clear, uh, uh, Ronnie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what do you think? I think these are wonderful ideas. We have never considered local correlation but i think it is more informative yes yes uh, I, don't, I i don't know how big are these uh you know families of local correlations no uh, simply uh, uh, if you have n observations on the vector uh, x y yeah uh, you get uh, uh, n 
realizations of local correlations for uh, each pair of observations. Yeah, but in this case, we don't have replicates. No, uh, it's not a question of rep replicates. Uh, uh, it's, I'm not uh, sure if I understand in, uh, the, the whole setup, but... Uh, yeah. Okay, we, we can exchange ideas by, yeah. by email. Uh, Ronnie... Uh, but, but, but let me tell you something about this 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 i uh, make sure I, I think that what you mentioned about uh, something each cluster i think that is something that we plan to do with this material science images they have there because they identify clearly different patterns and they have to deal with each of these patterns there so mm -hmm. i think the idea is very good to particularize a sample size for this region for this other region mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think that is, is something we plan to do mm -hmm. so i appreciate mm -hmm. your comment mm -hmm. Uh, and the second uh, uh, comment is uh, uh, from your last, last slides. You told that uh, uh, you uh, uh, would like to study this uh, effective sample size in fixed domain. Yes. Uh, but I, uh, I do believe that uh, the Coppola approach would uh, help a lot. Uh, Coppola, you know about Coppola? Yeah. A little uh, bit. Uh, no, this general is thing, a, a, a little bit is uh, enough. Uh, somehow, Coppola transforms uh, your, uh, let's uh, tell, scatter plot in the unit square. Mm. So, so in the unit square is a very, very uh, a restricted and fixed domain. I see. Uh, so, uh, all you are doing, you can transform in the uh, unit oh. square. I see. And to see and to see what happens there. Yeah, thank you very much for the tip. Uh, yeah, I uh, I appreciate uh, that uh, you are too happy. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we we had uh, some uh, exchange of ideas uh, oh, yeah. by email, but uh, it's real pleasure to to see you now. Sure. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, congratulations for uh, your research, uh, high quality research, Ronnie. Congratulations. congratulations. Thank you very much, Dr. Kole. Thank you very much. I Not Dr. Nikolai. Nikolai. <laughs> Nikolai. <laughs> uh, Paul, thank you for uh, inviting two, two important people here. I uh, refresh, uh, oxygenate my. Uh, your brain uh, uh, not only brain <laughs> <laughs> why not also your oxygen <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, sorry mm. for uh, extending too much uh, this nothing uh, nothing to apologize thank uh, you very much but Ronnie, I, i'll send a reference uh, for local correlation oh, yeah. probably probably uh, you can uh, re reduce uh, understand better what I mean. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Nicola. Your your presence and contribution is always, always uh, great. Uh, uh, yes, Ronnie, uh, I don't know if there is any, any, if there are any more questions. I don't have anything in the chat. So I would like to thank you again. It was, it was a pleasure. Congratulations on your book. That's, that's, uh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> thank you. And thank you very much for your time to share some of your of your knowledge with us. Okay, thank you for the invitation and a big hug for all Brazilian friends and 